Hello and welcome to Tommy Talks TV. I have one singular goal with this show and that is to help you make smarter decisions so that you can have better relationships. I'd like to start as usual by saying a very big thank you. Thank you for all your likes and your shares and your comments on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube. I really, really appreciate you because you're helping us spread the message further faster. So thank you very much indeed. Now today, have I got a treat for you. I have got a guest in my studio, my outdoor studio uh, today. A very special guest indeed. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my guest uh, before introducing him. Um, so my guest is a coach, a consultant, a corporate and congregational shepherd. He's constantly engaging people to become the best version of themselves. He believes that the very best of our world is hidden within the individual's mind and his life's passion is to help unlock the possibilities in people's minds. He's also an author and he's a speaker. He's been happily married for 24 years. And as a matter of fact, he's been happily married for 24 years to me. So today I have in, my, in the studio my very own sweetheart, Pastor Martins Tuluhi. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Great. So we're going to really have a fun time today. Um, I mean, obviously, we're filming at the moment in the middle of a, a global lockdown. Um, what we wanted to do today is to basically share a few things that will be an encouragement to you during this season. Um, so I think where I really would like to start is um, a phrase that my husband shared with me many years ago. As a matter of fact, it was the title of a book that he wrote many years ago that was titled in the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity so I mean what I'm thinking at the moment is this you know there's so many challenges around yeah. um, that people are facing right now it's a global lockdown people are facing all sorts of issues can you really honestly say that in the middle of this difficulty there is opportunity and if so how do people spot the opportunities in this season yeah thank you very much for that question I think it's um it's a timely question uh, indeed, and um, almost um, two decades ago when I wrote that little book, and it was out of a personal experience and some of the lessons I've drawn out from, you know, the likes of Robert Schuller and a number of my mentors over the years, and also, also from scriptures from the person of Christ. Um, yes, we are currently f faced with um, a worldwide challenge in the pandemic that is currently going on. Um, so there is crisis everywhere. Suddenly people are thrown into the midst of chaos. I don't have to rehearse what the chaos has been. For some it's around the challenges, some some is fighting for life, others is like fighting for their jobs, their career and all they built up upon to now seems to be crumbling. Mm. But however, in the midst of this we still can find a seed of opportunity. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. That is a fundamental truth I've come to discover. I've said that because, one, um, the, if you look at the human history and you see what we have gone through as humans, human beings have gone through all kinds of challenges. Have, we've pulled out of that and we've come out bigger, better and brighter. If you also look at personal lives around us, you can actually see people who have gone through a critical moment in their lives and they've turned those issues and challenges and the difficulty they've gone through and the adversity they've gone through to make the most of their lives. If you then look into scriptures and you particularly the period we are in now, the period where Christ came, he went to the cross, he died and on the third day he rose again. Everything looked bleak and dark, but on the third day there was resurrection. So there is something about the human being, the human life, that in crisis, the best of us and at the same time the worst of us will show up. There's a tension between the best and the strongest part of human humanity and the, and, and the weakness of humanity will show up in the midst of difficulties. But here is the point between the tension of the strength and the weakness of humanity is what I call decision choice and decision is based on the perspective you bring to the table mm -hmm. so when 
crisis come, when difficulty comes, the challenge here is what the decision will you make? What are the decisions you and I will make in the midst of the difficulty? That is what makes the difference. You know, the, your decision, if they are positive, then they begin to help you bring out the seed of opportunity in the midst of difficulties. This, I believe, is the key to getting into the next phase. So. To get into the next dimension, I think we need to begin to review our perspective and see things that this is not the end. The, 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 this is not the end. It's a bend in the road. It's not the end of the road. And you can always pull up and, and scale up no matter how low you have fallen. So in the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. That's great. So it's essentially what you're saying is that it's, it's really all about the decisions that we make uh, in the middle of, of the difficulties that we face. Uh, not so much about uh, just the challenges or, and how difficult the challenges are, but the decisions that we make in the middle of those uh, difficulties, that's what actually helps us to see um, the opportunities in, in, the, in the difficulties. Absolutely. So just like Rob uh, Anthony Robbins will say, our, uh, our decision shapes our destiny. It mm -hmm. is in the times when we make our decisions that our destiny is shaped. Mm. It is actually the decisions we make that will shape how we come out of these difficult times and the opportunities we take out of them. Mm. That's, that's really profound. Yeah. Um, so uh, the next thing I'm thinking about is this issue of proximity at the moment. So um, with a lot of couples now being on lockdown, uh, there's this close proximity that a number of couples are probably not used to. So, you know, maybe in, in the past you go to work, you know, and all that, but now it's like you're within the same house 24 seven. And, you know, I'm finding that there's kind of a dichotomy in how people are responding. So for, so for some uh, relationships, it's, it seems to be amazing. So they're using that as a, an opportunity to delve deeper, grow stronger, you know, uh, as a couple, right. build up their relationships. Um, but on the other hand, you find those that are really, really struggling and it's like this proximity and this closeness, all of a sudden they don't know what to do with it and it's revealing you know, even more than ever, the gaps in, in their relationship, you know, um, or maybe increasing tensions that seem to have been there before. So, um, you know, you read in the press that for instance, in, in France, uh, the um, the level of domestic uh, violence, domestic abuse has increased by 32%. In the UK, it has increased by 25%. So those are worrying statistics. You know, so, uh, you know, my question is, you know, what advice do you have for couples who are now facing this moment of close proximity. How exactly do we maximize uh, that moment? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. And I think it's for us to begin to look at the underlying factors before the challenges came to be, mm -hmm. before people now are within the same proximity, uh, the way they handle pressure and situations um, probably were different. Mm -hmm. um, now it's beginning to show up because of the proximity. And I think we need to focus on that. So as I said before, in crisis time, the best and the worst of humanity tend to show up. The best of us and the worst of us tend to show up. And then between that is a tension. And to resolve that tension is what I call a decision. A decision will need to be made. Mm -hmm. So this season call for a deliberate, intentional, calculative decisions that will take you in the direction you want to go, not in the direction you do not want to go. For instance, you know, what how do you want your relationship to be through this period? What do you want to derive out of it? Do you want it to be the best or the worst? And so that will inform the decision you are going to make. To make the right decision that is intentional and deliberate, not based on emotion, three things will need to happen. One of them, I think, is understanding. You've, we've got to choose understanding. Couples, we need to choose understanding in this period more than ever before because you're in the same space and there will be things you will see that may not be the way you like them to be. There may be things that might bring some irritation, so things that will be said that may not be the way you have always wanted them to be. And because you're in the same space, you tend to want to um, react. Instead of reacting, choose to understand. I think it's St. Francis, St. Francis of Assisi that said, seek first to understand before you're understood. Mm. So seek understanding. The second on the back of that is what I will say um, is to choose to be selfless. Mm. 
you know at the heart of every 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 conflict in relationship is self mm. if, if if you take out self and deal with the self ego and put it down and put other people first you realize that oftentimes issues will be easily resolved so you know think of the other person before yourself think of how you can better serve the other person i was look reading the book um uh, Man Search for F Meaning by Viktor Frankl I think that, that that's the title of the book mm -hmm. and he said that our purpose as human sh is best realized when we look out not for ourselves if we choose to forget ourselves and then love a cause or a person that is outside of us mm -hmm. so it is choosing to love beyond yourself and choosing to be selfish that is why we can find the best and find and make the right decisions when we are in the same space and uh, when the tension begins to build up and i think lastly but very importantly is to choose the right perspective and the perspective in this sense is, look, things might look not right to you, but how is the other person saying it too? So, um, so it does not have to be from my own view all of the time. And so choose to see it from with the eye of the other person. I think this perspective brings us to the point I, I wasn't thinking about before, but just kept to my mind now that empathy should be the cornerstone mm. of this period. When we deal with one another, each other, in the same space, with empathy, you hardly will find faults in another. Mm. And I think that's what scripture means when it says that um, love covers a multitude of sins. Love will overlook faults when there is love you almost not always will see faults so empathy feel for the other person if people know better better they will do better so let's seek to make decision based on understanding on being selfless on choosing the right perspective and also on giving empathy that way we will be able to grow through the season no matter how difficult the season might be, mm. and no matter what challenges we might have to face in this season, we will be able to grow through it, not be subdued by it. Thank you very much for that. So that was great. I mean, I, I particularly liked the bit about empathy. Uh, so essentially, when you put yourself in your partner's shoes, that makes all the difference in the world. Because I think things, everything always looks right to us from our own perspective. But when you actually put yourself in the other person's shoes, True. it makes all the difference. You know, all of a sudden, we begin to see things uh, completely differently. It changes our perspective, and therefore, yeah. it changes the way that we approach the situation. Yeah. So that was great. So um, another thing I'm thinking is, you know, one of the most evident fallouts of this current crisis is the financial fallout. So for a lot of couples, they're facing financial challenges, which, you know, they never anticipated that they would be facing in this current period. So my question is, what advice do you have for, for couples or people generally who are facing, um, you know, financial challenges in this period? Yeah, thank you very much for that. I think money, matter, money matters has always been an issue in relationship and mm. particularly so with this situation where you know the economic lifeline of the world seems to have grinded to a halt so suddenly and the fallout of this is that some people might be losing their jobs and incomes the income coming into the family might be coming down uh, you might even have a situation where some families are um, you know you have maybe both parties working as self-employed mm -hmm. what do you do how do you handle that I think um, the basic money issues or, or money wisdom will come to mind here and the first of them is what I will say to one scale down on spending mm. scale back on spending I think I, in this in this time we will need to just look at the basic necessity the essentials mm. somebody might be saying well even the essentials I may not be able to handle that how do I handle the, the times I think it's going to call for uh, being resourceful 
we, we scale back and then decide to be resourceful with what we have and find a way to go through this period. In different economies and in different nations, there are all kinds of plans and stimul stimulus packages that are being sent out. It might be wise to look online and find what stimulus package you can receive if it's possible. Um, in other nations, when it's not possible, you might want to um, find a way to to do with what you have and um, sometimes I need to call on goodwills if it is necessary but at the same time you know when you scale back on expenses the second thing is to actually begin to trust that the God who looks after the sparrow will look after you. And putting our faith and our confidence and our trust in God, a place of faith to help fix our finances cannot be overemphasized at this point. Um, you know, that, that, that puts your heart at rest. It, it helps to not let you worry about money. Mm. This is not to, the time to add money worry to the additional pressure that is currently going on. So it's, it's, it's important to scale back, scale back on expenses and then refuse to worry and put your faith in God, knowing that one way or the other, he's gonna care for you. And but lastly, but not the least, is to engage um, the, the, the basic money planning, planning for the future. Mm -hmm. You know, planning on how to generate more income, planning on how to to save what is available, mm. and planning on how to uh, you know go over and above the pressure that is currently on. So I will say planning, put planning, put your faith in God, and put a halt on spending on things that are not necessary. So the three P's you have there, mm. you put your place of faith in God to provide for you in this situation in this time um, plan on how you can you know scale up um make more money in the future as time goes on and plan on what to do as you walk through this season and also make sure you put a halt on spending on things that are not necessary mm, that's that's really important stuff i mean <laughs> that aspect of planning in particular, I think for a lot of couples, this is, you know, going to be one thing that they take out of this season, you know, yeah. and for individuals as well who might not be, you know, couples, but basically on their own, um, finding a way to plan your finances in such a way that, you know, even if there is a, there, there's a, a halt in your finances for, you know, maybe income is not coming in for a month, two months, three months, you have enough saved to actually get you through that season. I think that's going to be a very, very strong uh, lesson from, yeah. from this. Period. Yeah, just to add to that, also, I think uh, talking about in the middle of every difficulty lie opportuni lies opportunity. Um, I also will want to see this way that this time gives us an opportunity to pause and reflect. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scripture that I, I, I love in Malachi chapter, um, I think it's chapter 3 verse 6. It says, you sow and you bring in little, you do, and you um, you so I'm bringing little. It says, consider your ways. Mm. So this is a time when we need to reflect on how our ways have been, how we've been spending in the past, mm. and if we do this reflection, it will reveal to us a pattern or a habit that is money related. Mm. And so once you unearth your your money habits, you can begin to see whether it is positive. Or negative. If it is positive, then it's double down on how to increase and do more of such. If it is negative, then we may need to begin to see how to recalibrate in this time. To see how we can begin to cultivate the right habits in this season. Let us be clear. No matter what, how bad things are now, it is not the end. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact, the resilient factor is very critical in this time. Mm -hmm. Choosing to be resilient, choosing to tell a story, what I call a, a redemption story and not a regression story. This is not the end. Mm -hmm. A redemption story says, well, I might be going through this, uh, this issue at this point. I might be going through these challenges at this time, but this is not going to define me. I'm going to come out of it on the other side, stronger, bigger, and better. Yes, that's great. Um, so, and lastly, can you just speak to our men, speak to uh, the men, our fathers, husbands, you know, uh, whatever 
situation they're in uh, at this particular time and just you know share something from your heart yeah i'll say if you are a man and you are listening to me at this time you're watching this um, this production i want to say well i want to encourage you at this time and i want to salute you uh, for being a man um, that will choose to stand up for your family through this time through thick and thin make sure you stand as a strong shoulder for your family i know you might be going through a lot of challenges at this time but here is the point there is nothing as beautiful as being able to stand and offer up a shoulder and, and stand in a place of sacrifice for our spouses for our children and for our family so i'd like to encourage you choose to remain strong choose to be the shoulder that your wife your children your sons and your daughters can find a place to rest even though you might be feeling the pressure keep up if you need support find support but make sure let's make sure we are there for our families and additionally there is a place to go as men and I will want to, and which is my own experience, there is a place to go when I cannot handle my own pressure. I take it to God. I go on my knees. Mm -hmm. The scripture says, I think it's in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 6 and verse 12. The Bible says, we should come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we might find grace to, and mercy to help in time of need. In such times, men ought always to pray and not to Kevin, let's be there for our families. Let's be their heroes. Thank you. That's great. That's really encouraging. Thank you very much. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank so you. where can people find you online if they want to um, see a little bit more about your work? Um, I think largely you'll find me on Facebook, Martins K. Toluhi, mm -hmm. and also Martins Toluhi. On Martins Toluhi, you'll find me as Mastery Edge, Raising the Bar. Mm -hmm. um, on Instagram, you can also find me as Martins K. Toluhi and as Mastery Edge. I will be there calling you to raise your standard on your core relationships on your career and your calling it's been me saying it's a wonderful time talking to you so it's been really lovely sharing with you this afternoon i trust god that you have been blessed i've really been encouraged it's been fantastic sharing with my husband um so i want to encourage you to make the best of this lockdown with um, everything that has been shared with you today i want to wish you a very very happy easter you and your family and i'll be back again same time next week uh, to share something new with you if, you if you haven't joined the radical challenge yet i really want to encourage you to join it's a 30-day challenge for the month of April uh, that I've been sharing on Instagram, on Facebook and on YouTube. So join the Radical Challenge. Uh, it's, it's, if you go to my page on, on Facebook, uh, you will find it there. And also, if you haven't joined my Facebook group, Tommy Talks Marriage Masterclass, and I really want to encourage you to join as well. See you next time and bye for now. Take care.